right we have to make up uh, two 29.5 mil bushes uh, so I've uh, adjusted that for that particular length and uh, you yeah, so we're going to cut two off right now And there we have uh, two identical length bushes and it just uh, takes a few minutes. Alright, what I have to do here is, because uh, I've made the two bushes, the 29.5mm uh, ones, I have to make another two 7mm which uh, goes underneath the sprocket, this is the drive and the idler or the tensioner, uh, because it has to lift up the uh, sprocket to suit the alignment of the main driven one. If that makes sense here yeah. so because I've just pulled that out so I'm going to drill a hole probably about 30 mil in here and then I'll take that out and I'll put the uh, 10 mil back in here and then I'll, I'll cut off two 7 mil sections So what we're doing now, we're uh, we're going to set the adjustment here for seven mil. And then we can adjust the tool to accommodate. Right now, I've adjusted that one to the seven mil. In other words, I've got the cutter there at the moment. So what we do now is we get the actual uh, Allen key, and then we adjust the other section of it. The suit. Right, so what we do is we loosen this one here. I just hope that's in focus. So we loosen him off and we bring him into here like so. So it's just touching. We lock him back up. So that's locked. Okay. 
Okay, so we will start cutting parting it off. And all we do now is just go forward till that touches again. And that we've got our seven mil again. And now, if I can get in, <laughs> and now we've got two same size bushes which go underneath the gear, they're both 7mm, so that should be spot on now. Alright, what we've got here, we've got a piece of stainless steel, and uh, this is going to be the main drive shaft, if you want to call it that. That will go through this bearing, and also that'll go through this, uh, well, it's a sprocket, which will be the main drive for the chain. So what will happen is that one will go on top, that one will face downwards with a space there to lift it up and then the, then it'll go through the other bearing which will be like the one that's on the main bracket. So what I'm going to do I need to take about a mil and a half off and then yeah we'll have to wait and see what happens from there and just uh, slowly go into the correct measurement. That, at the moment we're just a fraction over that particular size and what I want to do is I have I want to have a fairly close tolerance when it goes onto the bearings uh, whoops so I don't want it too loose or anything like that I want to actually be able to have a very very light press fit on there if I can It's pretty well there, it's just a couple of thousandths of individual parts of the mill uh, just to get it down a bit.
but we've just got just over the 10 mil at the moment what I'll do is I'll uh, bring that back and just try our bits and pieces on, on the shaft that's our little sprocket gear which goes on that way you'll see that can that can t spin that's not a problem Oops. Well, that's a nice thing to do throw it away anyway um, what I've done I've actually drilled the hole in there and that's ready to have a grub screw so that will go on there'll be a spacer on here and then the main uh, well carrier block whatever you want to call it then that'll be spaced out and then once I've got the chain on I'll give a couple of revolutions to because the chain will also line it up then I'll put the grub screw in there and tighten it up uh, but what I will be doing is I'll be actually making like I'll, I'll get the end mill and I'll cut a small slot probably probably the full width of that so it'll give me that uh, extra tiny bit of movement wherever I want to go and then the actual bearing like I said that is a slightly different size so that will just go on there see that's nice and snug yep and what I'll do is uh, I don't want it too tight because then I can put in line put a bit of Loctite on there and that will actually lock it into place or that's what we're hoping to do so what I'll do I'll uh, pad that off now and then uh, from there I'll uh, dismantle everything get it ready for assembly what we've got here is these the components which are actually going back onto uh, the side of the milling machine that is the actual plate um, of clean that up sort of thing uh, these parts here are the four bolts that secure it through here these are then you've got your uh, cross piece that's that one there see that's that one that will go there you've got two spaces bolts that's your main drive shaft that's your shaft there and then that is your sprocket which is your main drive and then that's a spacer which I've had to uh, see as you can see there's an edge on that as well so I've had to reduce the size of that where it goes against the inner part of the bearing there so it doesn't bind and then we've got this piece here which is your idler so there's a spacer underneath to keep the because you have to have a certain height to line up with your main sprocket that is a spacer to keep it so it's not directly on this plate here and that is also small enough so that chain can go around that without obstruction then you bolt it in and you sort of tension up to suit so what I'll do now is I'll uh, put it onto the machine or onto the milling machine and then we'll go from there all right the time has come to uh, <laughs> see if we can assemble this unit now the uh, biggest problem here is that that hasn't got any support so I'll pull it off and I'll show you. Now see at the prop at the moment there's nothing there to hold that so what I need to do is, uh, I'll get rid of these other bolts. Now, let's grab a couple, two screws. What we're using, they're, they're inch and a half long, and they, they've got the uh, unit in there. Now, what we have to do is try and get this up here. Now, I've had to assemble that piece on first, otherwise we'll never get it on. Now, we have to try and line all of these things up again. It's a real pain in the proverbial, but that's okay. We can put up with that. So there'll be one. You'll have to excuse all the hands and fingers and things in the road but I can't do much about that at this stage.
Now I have to make sure when I tighten that's still loose. So I'll just give it a bit of a twirl up here. Now I've also recessed so the heads can go in there. And that sort of helps line this part up anyway. make sure that's still moving, not, not jamming up or binding on the uh, rack. Right, so that appears to be going quite, sorry, so that's turning quite well, so I'll torque that up a fraction more. Get the main drive sprocket. So that's our main drive sprocket. Now you have to make sure that, see, as you turn that, that that'll go in and out on the like a miniature worm. So you have to bring it virtually right out and then just give it a very light back again, sort of thing. Now I've got a, uh, I've drilled it with a lock in there as well, grub screw. You have to make sure that's right completely home. Now that's still moving, so it's still free. if I can get a bit more. So that's nice and snug now. Now I've already got the uh, chain in one piece so what we'll do is we'll put that over like so. I'll put it around the other way I think. There we go, that'll go that way. So that's sitting and that's moving quite well then that'll go on like so. Then we've got this particular tensioner here. Well, we can't actually put that on until we bolted the top up. And that's where we've got these two. So what happens, we've got a space under there to line the gear up here. We've got a space there and space there. And then that will bolt up through here.
fairly snug there. Now that is moving all right at this stage. Okay, so now we'll put the, uh, that's our slack adjuster if you want to call it that. Now that's also got a spacer to space that out to suit there. So what we need to do is bring it down like so, and feed it in from the side. Make sure it's all fully engaged. Now I haven't got it too tight, I've got a bit of slackness in it, so I need to try it out. Worst comes worst, I can always readjust it later on. Now this will have a lock nut on the back of it, but what we need to do now is just, I've bottomed it first to make sure it's sitting home, now I'll just slacken it off a fraction until that has got just enough movement to move like so. You can see the little teeth moving in there, or like that. Okay, so now that that's there because that is threaded into here with a lock nut on the back, then that'll be a preset tension. Um, and then we'll see how it goes from there. Right, I'm in the process at the moment. I'm going to uh, unlock the actual unit so that it is movable. Now, I haven't tried this at all, so I'd, I'd <laughs> you're, you're going to know as much as I do. It's either going to work or it's not. I'm just going to try this little uh, drill here. It's not very strong. Worst comes worse if I can always put a, a half inch drill on there. Now, if I go like that, it should work. Once I get it back into a, a drill mode. Oh, look at that. Going up, down, up again. I'll see if I can uh, give you a bigger, broader picture on it. All right, we'll try this again. And down. I've got about a nine to one ratio, 10 to one, something like that. I have to recount it all. But you can see it going up and down. Um, what we'll do is we'll just bring the camera down a tiny bit. It's a bit hard doing it this way, but still, you can see the drill chuck going down. So we've got a project that works now and it will go off one of these little tiny uh, battery operator things so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll bring it up here and I'll probably put a, a shaft across the top here and then that'll just sit on top of it. Well we'll see how it goes anyway and at, at the moment it seems to be going quite well. So that's a project that's finished so uh, 
look thank you for watching you want to make some comments go for it if you like it you know subscribe if you haven't already press the little bell button whatever <laughs> and uh, yeah thanks again we'll catch you next time